Now a third uh, a special case of the advection diffusion equation is what? Going back and look at this equation. So we already had this and this equal to zero, right? We had this equal to zero, we had this equal to zero, and what else can we make zero to make special cases? Both of this and this? It's just that we already had with the ODE, right? What have we not made zero yet? Yeah, we haven't made U equal to zero yet. Okay, that's actually yet another type of equations we can solve. And uh, that's actually pretty important because it describes the steady state solution of advection diffusion equation. So, so when you are uh, when th that's only that's only useful when you have an F, right? Because otherwise we have seen that uh, as long as you have a non-zero kappa, you evolve for infinity time, uh, you get just the average of the solution, just a straight line, right? So not very interesting. But like when you have F, you can get non-trivial solutions. <laughs> And particularly, for example, if you just have this, even without diffusion, this describes the steady state of a, of a, a heat conduction problem, where F is actually the source or sink of any uh, thermal energy, right? And basically, you are looking for the steady state temperature distribution over here uh, in the in the domain so uh, here I th I should actually write this as an ordinary derivative because I kind of assume that u is just a function of x but in most cases when you write down this equation I'm looking at more than one spatial dimensions right so so for example when I'm actually uh, I'm usually looking at for example the second derivative in x plus the second derivative in y plus the second derivative in z is plus f is equal to zero, right? So that's that's actually the conduction of heat in a three-dimensional solid. So so that's why even though there is just the one spatial dimension, I still uh, write partial derivatives, which is strictly speaking not correct, but like let's do this for in this class. All right. Okay, so so these are the kind of equations we are starting with solving uh, this semester. And uh, uh, if we have time, we'll generalize to more equations with uh, nonlinearity and uh, perhaps system of equations. And these are, you, you will notice that in the ODE section, our goal is how to solve any ODE, right? In the PD section, we are not. I mean, being able to, yet uh, there is no general solver that can solve any PD. That came to me when I started learning this, that came to me as a huge disappointment. Uh, not just the, twice actually. Once when I was, uh, uh, I did math in my undergrad. So, so the first time I took a PD class is actually an analytical PD class. And uh, that's just after I took an ODE class, which uh, I learned a lot. And I'm extremely surprised on how little I learned about PD in the PD class. There are basically, they only did uh, a theory of like, I think three or something specific PDs. I mean, it's extremely far from being able to analyze like any PD. And then in numerical methods, it's also like, okay, there is no method that you can use for any PDs. You have to figure out, uh, for any PD you are given, you have to figure out, is it similar to any of the previous PDs I have seen people use to solve using this numerical method? And if so, can I adapt the numerical method so that I can solve that PD like that? So, so that's why uh, we are starting with uh, some specific PDs, and uh, also we are not just going to introduce one method, we are going to introduce three different methods, okay, 
one each method is uh, suitable for solving a subclass of PBs. And uh, we'll come back to this be because these different special cases actually represent they are kind of the simplest member of a class of a pretty large class of PDEs that you can solve and uh, this advection equation is uh, the simplest possible PDE you can derive that exhibits what people call parabolic nature okay and uh, uh, the para what parabolic nature is basically relating to I mean intuitively you can think of a parabolic PDE as describing waves, sound waves, light waves, or any waves you can imagine. Waves that travel at deterministic speeds in space-time, right? So this is actually the type of uh, thing that characterizes, characterizes a parabolic partial differential equation where you have waves going on in space. The second type of PDE is uh, like the simplest member of which is the heat equation. It's called a parabolic PDE. The, previously, uh, the previous one, did I say correctly, is hyperbolic. Right, so the waves are hyperbolic PDEs. The heat equation are parabolic PDEs. The parabolic PDEs are, you can think of it as a degenerate case of hyperbolic PDEs. But basically what, what happens is that if you have an initial condition, the, the initial condition doesn't propagate in deterministic fixed speeds, but they really kind of smear out almost instantaneously. Right? That's what the heat equation is giving you. It's parabolic. And the third type of equations are what we call elliptic equations. I mean, they, 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 uh, there is some analogy to the hyperbolic, uh, uh, parabolic, and elliptic lines, but the, the connection is pretty convoluted. So, so we are not going to discuss that. I mean, you kind of have to go to analytical PDE classes to figure out what's the real connection with geometry. But here, the characteristic of the elliptic PDEs is that there is no special direction. Remember, in the parabolic and hyperbolic PDEs, there is a, the, the u is a function of space and time. In both cases, the, the time is a special dimension, right? Any, anything, it's a special dimension because if you change anything, it will propagate forward in time, but not backward in time. In the elliptic PDEs like this, there is no special dimension. You can't say that I, I pick x and anything I perturb in the equation only travels in one direction in x but not the other. Not true. If you, if, you, if you add heat to this equation, it'll go towards positive x direction, negative x direction, positive y direction, negative y direction, every direction, right? As opposed to the uh, parabolic and hyperbolic equations where things only go in the positive time direction. So, so these are three different uh, type of equations that uh, uh, is going to characterize very uh, all kinds of systems. For example, Navier-Stokes equation. Um, if you if you have Navier-Stokes equation with very low viscosity, it, it exhibits mostly hyperbolic type of equations. You have waves going on, right? For example, sound waves, shock waves comes out of um, the Navier-Stokes equations. If you have high viscosity, the characteristic of Navier-Stokes equations changes uh, to more like a parabolic equation, more like a heat equation. That's the effect of viscosity. Inside the boundary layers, for example, Navier-Stokes equations exhibit a lot of uh, characteristics of heat equation, parabolic equations. Okay. And then, this elliptic equation is very, very much characteristic of any structures problems. If you have a structures problem, if you put a force over there, the force is not going to go in just one direction, right? Uh, the deformation is going to be felt throughout the entire structure. So this equation is, uh, um, 
is uh, representative of uh, many structural problems. So, so we'll study several different methods that are going to be each suitable for a different subset of equations. And uh, even after we study all these methods, the method, the collection of this method uh, is not going to cover all the differential equations you ever going to encounter. So, so you still have to, there is still um, a lot of research going on in different fields of what's the best method, method to solve differential equations that came out as uh, new ones. Okay.